Well, it was a busy weekend of news for Oregon men's basketball, and I don't know yet what it means. I hope it's good news. Better be good news because Oregon had their top commit in the 2024 cycle request to be released from his national letter of intent. His name is Victorious Miller. He was the number 51 overall player on 24-7 sports. And in the 2024 high school recruiting cycle, Oregon now has one commitment from a three-star, six-foot-eight center, Ibrahim uh, Traore, I believe is how you pronounce his name. But uh, I, I am, I'm curious because the portal has been uh, Ibrahima Traore, beg your pardon. The portal has been wilding for college basketball. And Brad Underwood of Illinois, I thought, had some really targeted and accurate comments about the transfer portal. And the same principles that apply to college football are also unfortunately true in the college basketball calendar. Brad Underwood has his staff getting ready for their Elite Eight game against UConn, who I think is just going to blow everybody out of the water is what it looks like, while they are recruiting kids and talking to kids in the transfer portal. Like, that's just... No, 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 no. I feel like Jamie in the big short... Um, or not Jamie, or yeah, yeah, it is Jamie. When he's talking to Charlie, and Charlie says, I think we should buy more swaps. And Jamie says, no, 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 no. I, I don't understand why the college sports calendars are so backwards, but they are. And you shouldn't ever have to be managing your off-season moves while the season is still ongoing. There is no professional sport that does this. Not a single one. Okay? Things like a trade deadline move or a mid-season free, ag free agent signing is the only thing that's comparable in Major League Baseball. And that's in a 162-game season where you're going to have attrition with injuries and you have to have so many games that those moves are essential. And that sort of stuff... It works in baseball, but in college athletics, I, I just don't think that it makes a lot of sense for for anybody, frankly. So, uh, Victorious Miller decommitted, and Oregon's only got one high school recruit coming in, and so my first thought was the transfer portal. My, my first thought was, okay, Oregon's program has momentum with Dane Altman Company, fresh off a Pac-12 tournament title run, and then uh, beating South Carolina in the first round of the NCAA tournament. And I'd be lying if I said I hadn't on multiple occasions thought about what could have been if Oregon had beaten Creighton. You know, Tennessee's really good, but I'm watching NC State do the exact same thing. And I that it could have been Oregon. It wasn't. It stinks, but it, it absolutely could have been. I've thought about that more than a couple of times. You know, they're led by a dynamic big guy who's certainly a lot different than Enfali Dante. Uh, that DJ Burns dude, man. That guy's a watch. Everybody loves a big fella, right? Okay, anyway, so I, I think that for Oregon, a big move in the portal should be coming. At, le at least one. You're losing Jermaine Kuznard. You're losing Enfali Dante. You're losing Cary Oquendo from this year's team. So transfers were always going to be the move. But now that you have a, a pretty highly touted freshman decide, nope, I'm not going there, that makes me think, Perhaps I'm being overly optimistic, like with the Carlos Lachlan situation, that Oregon's got something in the bag, that Oregon has got some moves planned. And I know that Tony Stubblefeld has uh, been around the program for the last couple of weeks. He tried to be the head coach at DePaul. That's a darn near impossible, impossible job. He was at Oregon's games during the Pac-12 tournament run, might be returning to Oregon staff. He was always known as a pretty darn good recruiter for the Ducks, is my understanding. And so, you know, everyone, and of course, Dana is the most important guy, but I think that bringing him back could make sense. And when you've traveled the country like that and been around, interacted with a lot of different players, he might have a contact or two that could get you in touch with this player over there to see if he wants to come play for the Oregon Ducks who are trying to build momentum after a round of 32 appearance. So I, I just, I lean optimistic, 60-40 optimistic. There, there have to be portal moves. You're not going to go out and flip a bunch of high school kids. So portal moves are going to arrive. That's not an if, that's a when. And the next question is then how many? And that kid decommitting makes me think, 
he might have seen that someone's coming in who's going to be good. So I got just, a, I'm not, I'm not, I'm trying to knock it over my skis, but I got a little bit excited because I, I thought, well, that guy's really talented. That's a bummer that he won't be a developmental pick. But why does he not think that he should go play at Oregon now? I don't think it was Keyshawn Bartholomew. So that's the good news that we know for certain right now. Keyshawn Bartholomew, who played just 18 games this year, eight point a game score off the bench, announced that barring an injury setback, he'll return to Oregon next season. That is very good news for the Ducks. Now, if Bartholomew is your starting point guard, I'm not crazy about it. Guess what? He's not going to be. He is my ideal sixth man, first guard off the bench. He can run the point a little, or he can play off the ball, and he just scores. He scores inside. He scores in the mid-range. He can shoot. He just scores. He just comes in and he scores. And for Dana Altman teams who historically have you know had their ups and downs offensively, when the offense goes cold and they have one of those stretches where they don't score for five or six minutes, he's a guy that comes in and can find a good shot and can hit a shot. Now, he's not a huge guy. I don't think he's bringing a lot defensively, but that's why you have other guys who you know can kind of help uh, account for those sorts of things uh, and shortcomings of their teammates. So uh, you know, hopefully Bartholomew is able to recover. That's the one caveat is he's got to make a full recovery. But if he does, I'd love to have him back. Like I said, eight point a game score in the 18 games he plays this year. If he were given a 2K attribute, some of you will get this reference, others might not. It would be the microwave. It, it, it would be the microwave ability where he comes in and you can say, wow, he scored eight points in 90 seconds. That's Keyshawn Bartholomew at his best, but also can play off the ball, hits threes, would love to have him coming off the bench. Like right now, I think you're looking at a starting five of uh, certainly KJ Evans, Jackson Shellstad, maybe Nate Biddle. We'll see how, much, how, how well he's able to recover as well after an injury and sickness. You need to bring in a big or two. I mean, you've got Traore coming in. Don't know if they expect a lot out of him as as a true freshman. But Mookie Cook and JJ and Tracy, those are probably your wings, or at least two of your, your, your small forwards in, in some order. And my thinking is Tracy starts the year as the starter, and by the end of the year, hopefully Cook develops into the starter and Tracy comes off the bench. But you need a starting two guard, and you probably need a wing and a big to come off the bench. So... I think Oregon is going to make at least two additions from the transfer portal. I hope that that number is three, and I could see four. I, I I could see four. I haven't done the scholarship math, but you know, losing Kuznard and Dante and Aquendo, and then Jesse Zarzuela is not coming back from last year's team. That should be four scholarship spots that are available. So we'll see how many guys they they end up bringing. In. You're bringing in Treore though. Uh, we'll see if you know anybody else uh, transfers out, but. This is an ongoing situation in terms of Oregon's roster development. Now is the time when you should be, you know, making making contacts and moves and everything. But, you know, would it hurt college basketball to save this until after the national championship game? No, I I really don't think so. And I think that for the Ducks, they need to make a couple of transfer portal moves. And hopefully this victorious Camiller decommitment means that they've got a, a couple of big guys coming in. I would watch for uh, the Stoyakovich kid at Stanford. He was down to kind of Oregon and the Cardinal, and he went into the portal after they moved on from Jared Haas. They, of course, hired Kyle Smith from Washington State, but Oregon was in the running for him. He could fit. He he, he, he could absolutely fit. Just a name to watch out for, but certainly there will be others that pop up. Appreciate everyone listening. I will see you next time, and until then, hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and as always, go Ducks.